Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, I want to discuss the really important role that the gonadotropins, a set of hormones produced by the brain, what role they play in both the male and female reproductive systems. So to begin with, we know that there is a part of the brain called the hypothalamus. And there is a projection of the hypothalamus called the pituitary gland, and it has an anterior and posterior lobe. We're gonna focus on the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland because that is where the gonadotropins are produced. So the gonadotropins, gonadotropins. Firstly, gonad is referring to the male and female reproductive organs. So for the males, testes, females, ovaries. Tropins tells you that this hormone or these hormones are gonna to travel to these tissues, the gonads, and tell them to release more hormones, all right? Now, what are the gonadotropins? The gonadotropins are follicle stimulating hormone so it's follicle stimulating hormone, also known as FSH and luteinizing hormone. Also known as LH. Now, these two gonadotropins, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, they're named after what they do in the female reproductive system. So let's focus on that one first. So what do they do? All right. Firstly, let's look at follicle stimulating hormone and we know they play their role at the ovary. So let's draw an ovary up here. And what we need to know is that every month, through the menstrual cycle, the reproductive cycle, what's happening is that there are these primordial follicles. So there's a whole number of eggs and they need to begin to mature. Now what you're gonna find is that around about 14 days of this cycle, an egg will be ovulated. This egg will be taking up into the uh, uterine tubes or the fallopian tubes and will be waiting for fertilization, for a sperm to come along. Now in order for this process to happen, you're gonna have a number of primordial oocytes that will turn into something called a primary follicle. So this is a primary follicle right here. Now the primary follicle will be frozen. It's stuck there until follicle stimulating hormone comes along. That's unsurprising, right? It's named after what it does. It stimulates the follicle. So follicle stimulating hormone comes along and stimulates the primary follicle to turn into something called a secondary follicle. And this secondary follicle will start to grow and develop a number of different cells around it. Now these cells are going to produce a hormone called estrogen. Really important, estrogen. That's the first thing. The second thing is that this secondary follicle is going to begin to turn into a more mature or graphene follicle. And this more mature follicle is going to really start to thicken up these cells. Now these cells are called granular cells or the thicker cells. They're going to start to thicken up, really pump out that estrogen. But now we're at around about day 14 and something needs to happen. That egg inside needs to be ovulated. This is where luteinizing hormone comes along. Luteinizing hormone stimulates ovulation. This egg then becomes, then gets ovulated, and it's gonna ovulate into the fallopian tubes, right? Now the thing is this, once luteinizing hormone has to told that egg to ovulate, these cells remain. Now, we said that follicle stimulating hormone stimulates the follicles. What does luteinizing hormone do? So lutein means yellow. Luteinizing means to make something yellow. What happens is these cells that are now remaining, so there's a little group of cells that are now remaining, they start to become yellow and they are called the corpus luteum. Corpus meaning body, luteum meaning yellow. Now I haven't drawn it up as yellow, but it is. And what these cells do is they start to produce progesterone.
So what have we found? We've found that follicle stimulating hormones stimulate a primary follicle to go to a secondary follicle and that produces estrogen. Luteinizing hormone tells the egg to ovulate and the remaining cells called the corpus luteum produce progesterone. What does both estrogen and progesterone do? They prepare the uterine lining for implantation. So uterus preparation, endometrial thickening, starts to become more vascular, starts to thicken, and this is going to obviously be beneficial for egg implantation or some uh, fertilized blastocyst implantation. Let's now focus on what's happening in the, so again, let's just label this because this is the ovary, this is gonna be female. Let's now have a look at what's happening in the male reproductive system. So we're going to have a testy, not an ovary, we're going to have a testy. And in the testy, we're going to have something called seminiferous tubules. This is where sperm is produced and that's going to give you an indication as to what these two particular hormones are going to do. So what we're going to find is in the testy, we're going to look inside the testes, we're going to have a look inside the seminiferous tubules and it's going to be a hollow tube like this. What you're going to find is there's a couple of different types of cells. All right. First type of cell is going to be a group of cells that sit inside this tube like this. These cells are called sustentacular, sustentacular cells, also known as Sertoli cells. Really important. Then there's going to be a group of cells that sit outside the tubules. They're called interstitial cells interstitial cells, also known as Leydig cells. All right, what happens? Follicle stimulating hormone gets released. What does follicle stimulating hormone do? Follicle stimulating hormone stimulates the Sertoli cells. All right. What does it stimulate the Sertoli cells to do? Stimulates them to produce something. What does it stimulate them to produce? Something called A, B, P. ABP is androgen binding protein. Androgen binding protein. All right, what does luteinizing hormone do? I'll tell you what it does in a sec. Luteinizing hormone stimulates the Leydig cells. So think of the L in luteinizing stimulating the Leydig cells. And what do they produce? They produce testosterone. Testosterone. All right, here's the thing. Androgen. An androgen is a male sex hormone. Testosterone is the male sex hormone. Androgen binding protein. So it must bind to testosterone and that's exactly what it does. ABP and testosterone bind together. And what do they do together? They start to produce sperm. So what do we have? We've got estrogen and progesterone preparing the endometrium or the uterus for implantation and ABP and testosterone producing sperm. So, luteinizing hormone stimulates Leydig cells to produce testosterone. Follicle stimulating hormone stimulates Sertoli cells to produce ABP. There's gonna be a quick and easy way to present this now. Let's have a look. What we can now do is take this information that we've learnt. We can say, all right, here's male reproductive system, here's female reproductive system. Follicle stimulating hormone for the male reproductive system, follicle stimulating hormone for the female reproductive system. What did it do? Let's start with female. Stimulated primary to secondary follicle. Then what did that secondary follicle do? It produced estrogen. What about in the male reproductive system? Follicle stimulating hormone stimulated, what cell type was it? It was the, was it interstitial? Was it Sertoli? It was Sertoli. Stimulated the Sertoli cells and these Sertoli cells produced, do you remember what it was? Androgen binding protein, A, B, P. Luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone stimulated ovulation in the female reproductive system and that corpus luteum that was remaining, what did that, so led to a corpus luteum, 
What did that corpus luteum do? It produced progesterone. What about in the male reproductive system? Luteinizing hormone, Leydig cells. What did the Leydig cells do? Testosterone. Testosterone. And together, what did these two do? Sperm production. And what did these two do in the female reproductive system? Prepare the uterus. So there we go. This is the role that the gonadotropins, FSH and LH, play in the male and female reproductive systems.